Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for the grace of this beautiful day. We thank you for your greater source through the night that just ended. Grave cannot celebrate thee. The dead cannot hope in thy truth. Those who are in the mortuaries cannot appreciate you. Father, we thank you because we are awake, we are alive, we are allowed to be part of this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Father, we want to go into our morning devotion now. And we thank you for that because of your attribute of omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience. We ask you, Father, that to manifest your presence in every location where we are connected to this morning prayer in Jesus' name. And Father, as we go into singing crosses now, we pray that you will sanctify us, sanctify the crosses, accept them for the glory and honor of your name in Jesus' name. And as we praise you, worship you, and praise you in return, you continue to bless and prosper us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You are welcome to this morning devotion in Jesus' name. Before we go into the study, we are going to have some choruses. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. In the morning, I lay in the morning. In the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, I lay in the morning. In the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, very early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy, O Lord, worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, and power, for thou art created. All things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Thou art worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, and power, for thou art created. All things and for thy pleasure they are. And were created who is like unto thee. O Lord, who is like unto thee? O Lord, who is like unto thee? O Lord, who is like unto thee? O Lord, among the gods. Who oh, is like thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Have your way, Lord, have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way. O Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. O Lord, have your way. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, 
He hid the leper where the cripple saw him. They started walking. Even today, my Lord will do me, he will do me good. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, he hid the leper when the cripple saw him. They started walking. Even today, my Lord will do me good. In Jesus' name. Today, this week, what remains of this month, what remains of this year, and our life, God will continue to do us good in Jesus' name. Uh, welcome to this morning's morning devotion in Jesus' name. And the, the topic of our discussion this morning is Jesus Christ, the healer, and the storm karma. The healer and the storm karma. Before I go into the uh, passages, let me briefly explain. Jesus Christ heals all sorts of sicknesses and diseases, aches and pains, ailments and illnesses. But at times when we talk about Christ healing, we normally limit it to uh, physical sicknesses and diseases. There is no sickness or disease in all areas of our life. Either physical, spiritual, material, occupational, professional, marital, and matrimonial, that our Lord Jesus Christ cannot heal. But for you to be able to enjoy His healing, the starting point is having a relationship with Him. You must repent of your sins, accept Him as your Lord and Savior. After that, you can then begin to commit to Him all your sicknesses, all your aches, all your pains, and he has healed many in the past. He's still healing. And whatever sickness or disease you commit unto him, he will visit you, he will answer you, and we hear you in Jesus' name. This morning, once again, the topic is Jesus, the, uh, the healer and the storm uh, karma. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. It reads, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. That passage I just read emphasizes to us the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The same thing this passage I'm going to read now uh, re -echoes. Matthew 9 35 says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. These two passages talk about the earthly ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He engaged in threefold ministry of preaching, of teaching, and healing when it was upon the surface of the earth. Even though that is not here, as many as believe in his name, in his word, and his precious blood, still have access to being healed. Though he came to seek and to save, save the lost, he did not fail to give comfort to the bereaved. He did not fail to heal the sick, and did not fail to feed the hungry and deliver the op oppressed. His ministry of healing, multitudes of people, attracted many people into his ministry when he was upon the surface of the earth. And it is was because of, you know, God the Father, you know, empowered him, and graced uh, him, and enabled him with the Holy Ghost and power. Thereafter, Jesus Christ went everywhere, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And today, Jesus Christ himself said that, yes, what Jesus Christ did, as commanded us, we can still do, if he's with us. In the book of John 15, verse 5, we are not going to read. Jesus Christ said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, it shall do everything that I have done. 
But without me, you can do nothing. So we have to be in Jesus Christ before we can do what it, uh, he did during his earthly uh, ministry. And that means that we have to be, to be saved. Christ's ministry was centered on calling sinners to repentance and salvation of their souls. That was the main reason our Lord Savior Jesus Christ came to, came to this world. And we see that in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. He came mainly to seek and to save the lost. But in addition to that, he healed the sick. And those who repented of their sins, he also called to be their disciples. So when he started his early ministry, he called disciples. The first disciple he called was uh, you know, Simon Peter and then uh, Andrew. Every minister or ministry that will fulfill Jesus Christ's uh, ministry when he was upon the surface of the earth must aim at meeting people's physical needs, at meeting people's uh, spiritual needs, and at meeting people's uh, material needs. Why? Because if you are trying to preach somebody and you see that there is a need in his or her life and you don't attend to that need, you'll be going there to just w uh, waste your time. But if you dis discover, the person may not even tell you that these people has need and it's within your capacity, your, your power to be able to do it, you know, attend to that need and be able to, you know, get his attention. So that's what our Lord Jesus Christ did because he was ministering to the physical needs and material needs of the people. People were able to listen to him, and many of them gave their life to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our story today, and we raised Jesus Christ, numerous healing miracles, which made people to believe and have faith in him as the expected Messiah. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to this world as the Messiah. But his healing ministry attracted many people into his, uh, uh, unto him, and through that, they, they, they get saved. And Many of them will not even attend to, uh, to, uh, to him except they give their life to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at the book of John chapter 4, verse 48. This was the comment of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it is still equally true today. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. This is still true today. When people hear of miracles and signs and wonders taking place, through one minister of God, you see people rushing there. Why? Because they want their own problem to be to be solved. But they needed faith to be able to uh, do that. And I pray that the grace to continue to give time to attending programs that will uh, 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 bring souls of men to the kingdom of God. God will grant unto us in Jesus' name. We don't want to go and see catalog of healings by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 1, sorry, chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. It says, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper. There came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. What we learn here? What we learn here is that this leper manifested faith. Maybe he has had testimony about the people that our Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ healed. And he manifested faith. That's one thing I want us to learn in healing by Jesus Christ. You have to believe in him. You have to manifest faith in him. That is what we see this uh, leper did. He believed that Jesus Christ can heal him, and he appealed to him. Jesus Christ saw his faith, and Christ healed him. So what we are learning here is that for us to receive a healing from Christ and to calm all our storms in life, we have to manifest faith in him. Jesus Christ's response to the leper's request shows that he is willing to heal those who come to him by faith. Faith is very, very important to receive anything, including healing, from God the Father, from God the Son, from God the Holy Ghost. And no matter how serious our cases may be, if we manifest faith and pray unto him, he will answer. In the book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 22, we are not going to read, but there Jesus Christ himself invited the people, saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor 
and are heavy laden, and I'll give, give unto you rest. You know, why are people heavy laden? People are heavy laden with uh, challenges, sicknesses, aches, and pains. But if we go to him, manifesting faith, faith is the medium through which we can receive the miracles and healing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Psalm 37, verse 5, which we are not going to read, it says, Commit thy will unto the Lord. Trust also in him, he shall bring it to pass. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, we are not going to read. The centurion besought our Lord Jesus Christ, saying, My servant is grievously tormented, sick at home. And Jesus Christ answered and said, I'll come and heal him. But Jesus Christ said, I'll come and heal him. Sorry, the centurion said, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak with the word only. Look at that faith. The centurion's servant was sick, sit at, at, at home. He left the servant at home and came to our Lord Jesus Christ and said, My servant sit at home. And Jesus said, yes, I'm here to heal the sick. I'll come and heal him. But centurion said, Speak the word only. That is manifesting faith. And our Lord Jesus Christ saw the faith of the centurion. He spoke the word only. And the servant that was at a great distance was healed. So the same thing is still happening today. We need faith to be able to receive healing from God. Distance is no barrier to the faith for a believing heart. You can pray here, where we are here, and the answer will come in any part of the world. God knows our problems and challenges. He expects his people to ask by faith. Recognizing of God's presence everywhere is Jehovah Shammah. Strengthens our faith and prevents us from running helter scatter during trials. If we manifest faith and pray, whatever our challenges, God will answer us and will continue to answer us in Jesus' name. The next miracle that our Lord Jesus Christ performed is healing of Peter's mother-in-law. We see that in Matthew chapter 8 verses 14 and 5. Jesus Christ healed Peter's mother-in-law who was sick of fever. So let's read, read um, verses 14. And Jesus said unto the centurion, let's go to verse 14 of Matthew chapter 8. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his mother's wife laid and sick of fever. And Jesus Christ just stretched his arm and touched her and she became healed. Even after healing, she was able to attend to them. That is a confirmation that the healing was completed and perfect. So the next miracle of healing that our Lord Jesus Christ performed is healing a man sick of the palsy. We see that in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 9 verse 2. Matthew chapter 9 verse, verse 2. The man was brought to our Lord Jesus Christ by four people. And because they could not have access to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what did they do? They went up, removed the roof of the building, and lowered the, the sick person to where our Lord Jesus Christ was. And when Jesus Christ saw the faith, the trust, and confidence of these four men, Jesus Christ said unto him, Seeing their faith, Jesus said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. But the people that were there saw what he, he said as blasphemy. Even though they didn't speak out, but Jesus Christ knows what is in my heart, what is in your heart. And when Jesus Christ perceived that they did not believe, so he went further to forgive the man his sins. And the man got double portion. He was saved and he received healing. So through the faith of the four people that brought him, this faith is very essential to receiving our healing and cure. The next miracle that our Lord Jesus Christ performed was the healing of the issue of blood. A woman had issue of blood. We, we see that in Matthew chapter 9 verses 20 to 22. The woman 
had an issue of blood. And what did the Lord Jesus Christ do? Let's read, read the verses 20 to 22. And behold, a woman which was deceived with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched him. For she said, if within herself, if I may but touch his garment, this is another act of faith, merely touching the garment of our Lord Jesus Christ, she believed that she shall be whole. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. By simply manifesting faith and touching the garment of our Lord Jesus Christ, the woman received healing. That was an act of faith. And Jesus Christ is not physically here now, but if we manifest faith and connect him, you know, and believe in him, the healing that that woman got, we too can still got, and the grace to, to continue to touch Jesus Christ through faith for solutions to our problems. God will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Then the next one is uh, the healing of two blind women. So two blind men. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 31, the two blind men carried, cried unto Jesus Christ, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy upon us. My listeners, that is a very, very important you know, prayer point. You know, whatsoever you desire, remember that Jesus Christ is the son of David. And when we pray like that, we are manifesting faith. Matthew 9, 27 says, And when Jesus Christ departed thence, two blind men followed him, saying, crying, and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy upon us. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a God of love, is a God of mercy. And when we cry unto him, unto him, asking that he should touch us and heal us, he will do it. All we need is faith. And Jesus Christ healed them of their blindness. And whatever your blindness, spiritual or physical, I pray that God will touch you and hear you in Jesus' name. The next miracle that our Lord Jesus Christ performed was the delivery of two men possessed with devils. We see that in the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 32 to 34. Matthew chapter 8, verse 32 to 34. The case of the demon possession is an extreme form of sickness that required divine intervention. You know, this people, they were possessed with devils. And he said unto them, Go! And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down to a deep place into the sea and perished there. The story here was this. The case of the demon possessed is an extreme form of sickness that requires special intervention. Unlike other sicknesses that have medical remedies, only spiritual solution can permanently cure them. These two people, two people we are referring to here were demon possessed, that nobody could go near them, nobody could shame them, but when our Lord Jesus Christ got there, they too displeased in them so that Jesus Christ has power over uh, evil spirits. They were even the ones that say that it should cast them into the uh, um, into the swine. And with the authority and power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the demons were cast out. He commanded them to go into the swine. And all the swine ran into the sea, and the God perished. The Lord has power, and still gives the same power today to us as disciples to deal with such extreme cases. You know, in the book of Mark chapter 16, verses 18 and 17, we are not going to read. Jesus Christ said, you know, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the same power he exercised, he gave unto us. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 18, he said, And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So, we are his children. When we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, that power will come upon us. And we are still going to be able to exercise it, the same thing. And I pray that the grace to continue to exercise that power, God will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Let's briefly, before we pray, look into Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 53. Isaiah chapter 5, uh, 53. 
verses 4 and 5. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. A leader is Ida chapter 53. Surely he has come and borne our griefs and cried. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The shadowness of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. It is with the stripes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we are healed. That was why he came to this world. And the same power that our Lord Jesus Christ manifested to heal in those days are still manifesting today. But what do we need to be able to receive from him? One, the certain point is that you cannot benefit for, from any situation except you are giving your life to our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to experience healing in any areas of your life, whatever may be the nature of your sins and diseases, all the starting points to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you are not giving your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to close your eyes now and talk to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to forgive you your sins. And if you are giving your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, pray for grace to be able to continue in the race. And if you are backslided, I want you to pray to God to touch you and restore you back, back to faith. And if you are weak and weary in faith, Jesus Christ is the only one that can strengthen you, energize you, empower you, and grant you the grace to continue to abide in the faith. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for what you have taught us today. Jesus, the healer, and the storm comer. We thank you for all the testimony about the healing. Father, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. Father, as we manifest faith in him, as we manifest belief in him, as we manifest confidence in him, the grace to continue to touch him with faith to, for all our needs, spiritual, physical, financial, material, healing and health, to continue to be manifested. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you grant unto us in Jesus' name. For those who are just giving their life to our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, in the name of Jesus, you have said that though our sins be as scarlet, you will purge us, you will wash us, we are going to be as white as snow. Father, forgive them, pardon them, and the grace to go and sin no more. Father, bestow upon them in Jesus' name. And those who are already saved, grant us the grace to continue to continue in the faith until the end. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen.